Uh, I don't know what happened, but I watched this video. Did you Did you watch the video? Of, like, I, I've, I've, uh, yeah, I've watched the video. I took it. I took a deep took a deep dive with this thing. Chris, we got a show, dude. Yeah, What's we up? do the Chris and Brooks show. Apparently, it's the Chris and Brooks show. <laughs> Welcome to anyone watching this to the Chris and Brooks show. Um, we don't have a name yet, so maybe people can maybe people can give us some ideas. We need, we need a name. We definitely need a name. We need a name. Uh, we also we also said we were going to use Chat GPT to help us come up with the <laughs> names, like for for this show, man. Uh, so either A, I think we need a consistent name every time, or B, the possibility of like rotating names given by AI. Like, what are your what are your thoughts with that? That's interesting. You know, and and what we did. I did use chat GPT for some names of the show and I thought they were kind of lame. Um, what did you get? I can't, I had that, the first one was a uh, mobile munch and more a community digest. Eh, eh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the beautiful buzz. Yeah. <laughs> buzz. Okay. The Gulf coast gab. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's okay. Uh, the mobile mixer food, fun and community connection. I mean, I mean, these are. I mean, got to admit, man, these are pretty creative for a. And you can, uh, yeah, I think the good thing about that, you can kind of mix mix the two. Uh, last one was Harbor Highlights, Taste and Tales of Mobile. Harbor Highlights. Uh, yeah. I've never heard anyone not, say, yeah, Harbor. Not too mobile. big on Mobile, but being you know a, known as a harbor. I mean, the harbor it, it certainly is, but um, the, you know, port city and everything. But uh, it's not we, really something that's very common in our uh, in our language. Do you think we could start that? Like start a revolution? Like start using the word harbor everywhere we go in mobile. I've never heard anyone say harbor ever. <laughs> like, yeah, heading down to the harbor tonight. <laughs> um, <laughs> um I'm, so, I'm all right, actually so tempted. Fun fact. I'll give you a fun fact. There is a uh, there's a there's a song uh, George Strait recorded it and it's called so uh, uh, Stars on the Water and it mentions mobile in it and it has something about there, you know, down there on the harbor. Uh shiny moon beams on the bay um and it talks about like you know people coming from miles around to hear a jukebox sound on the water which is huh. you know the song was written in, like the 70s i don't really think it really applies to uh to today's you know mobile uh the scene downtown or anything like that but you know that song is out there and it's a very popular song so last mention of harbor and mobile was about 50 years ago is is what <laughs> Have you, do you know of any song, other? So George Strait, uh, he recorded that song early 2000s. Oh, 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 oh okay, yeah. okay. So but it was originally, I can't remember the guy who originally wrote the song, but it, I think it was back in the 70s, early 80s. Okay. Cars okay. on the Water. Yep. It mentions like Gulf Coast. So it mentions Mobile in a, in a verse. It mentions Biloxi in a verse. It mentions uh, like Houston, uh, Louisiana. So anyway. All right. If people, if people go. watching this show or, or listening or whatever you're doing, um, and by the way, this show, we're not even sure if we're calling it a show, but we think we're going with the word show for what this is. Oh, it's absolutely a show. Okay, 100%. Okay, this is a show. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is a show. Because we're and, entertainers. And because we're, we're entertainers. Both, <laughs> both the video, though, and uh, and we're going to put this out. Like I'm definitely putting this out in podcast form on the Mobile Rundowns uh, platform. Um, our, po our podcast is like, if 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 you go listen to the podcast that we run, it is very random and sporadic. Uh, we had nonprofits in the past. We've had some. We had some guests. We had guest episodes. We had one of Chris's episodes from his company uh, because his po you have a podcast called Port, Port City, City Plate. Plate. Port City Plate podcast, which by the way, people should check that out and listen Absolutely. to that. Um, and y'all are yeah, y'all are doing cool stuff. And so it's like I was like, man, I want to like I want to put some of your content on our on our platform or whatever. And so we kind of like syndicate. I guess I'm gonna call it syndicated, like syndicated some of y'all's content onto uh, onto that. But this show will be a part of that audio, uh, and also also video. We're gonna figure out the channels that it'll go out on, but like video as well, because some of the stuff that we'll do will be visual, and we'll talk through it, and we'll try to uh, we'll try to be kind and aware of people that are maybe listening only so we'll try to like talk through anything that we uh any anything that we talk through right so right there you go wait real quick three more um i had some options i had about i don't know i had 20 or so options for the show from chat gpt um buzz brew 
Southern Sips and Stories. That's a lot of alliteration there for you. Um, and then the Java Jamboree. I don't know, man. There's some good. There's some good options. So, all right, we uh, got something to work with. We got some homework for maybe, ourselves and for whoever's going to listen to this. Maybe that's a poll. Like maybe we can. Uh, maybe we can poll. Um, poll the Mobile Rundown, like in our newsletter, and maybe we can come up with a couple of names. There and say, go. hey, what should our weekly name of the show be? I don't know how I don't know how often we should change it. I feel like we could I feel like we should change it at least at least monthly or something. I don't know. Um okay, I don't know. Uh I'll 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 make a note of that. Maybe that's something that we maybe that becomes our poll question. We're only gonna do one per week. Like so we got it's gotta be the best the best poll question to bring in the audience interaction. Yeah, and I think that's it. I think that's our poll question for this week. But there's some really cool things we're gonna talk about on this one today too, though. All right, what you want to chat? What you want to chat on first, man? I mean, of course, you know what? You know, we got Tiki Week is going on in Mobile right now, or it's coming up next week as we're recording this. Um, did did you just? Uh, did you have an episode on I the did. podcast that just came out? Right, okay. I did have an episode. Yes, it was with uh, Roy Clark, who is um, general manager and kind of you know lead bartender over at the Haberdasher, and he was the one who started Tiki Week in Mobile. Nice. Um, okay. So Roy started this. This is the tenth year of Tiki Week, actually. Is um, it really tenth year? Yep. Tenth anniversary started twenty thirteen, and um, and it started um, at just at the half, and that was like I said ten years ago, and and, and that's kind of something we talked about on the episode was the 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 bar scene was completely different, you know, here in Mobile in twenty thirteen. Uh, people were not paying ten dollars for a cocktail um, back in those days as much as they are now, you know. Ten dollars. That's actually a pretty good deal for a, a craft cocktail. Ten dollars is now. Um, yeah, yeah. So you know, and, and so we, me and Roy talked a lot about that, kind of the evolution of the you know craft cocktail scene in Mobile. And um, but but going back to Tiki Week, uh, you know, like I said, it started at the Haberdasher, and now it's grown into a, like a citywide event. And um, and so there are you know over twenty restaurants and venues that participate in Tiki Week. Um, not just bars and, uh, but also restaurants and coffee shops, you know, have, you know, tiki themed drinks and stuff like that. So um, it's been really, really cool to, you know, uh, kind of see the evolution of it. Uh, you get a little passport and you get your passport stamped uh, okay. at the participating venues and locations. Okay. And, and so like I said, so me and Roy talked about that. We also talked about, you know, all the things at the Haberdasher and. Um, Is I this Roy? Definitely... Is this Roy that I popped up? Is this yeah, that's Roy's Roy. picture? Yeah, yeah. The, okay, that so, was too cool of a picture, man. That was I had to share that one. I I, that, I, I stole that one from their page. That's, that's awesome. A, that's a cool photo. Good shot, uh, Roy. Good shot. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah cool. Roy's Roy's a cool guy, man. And uh, I I enjoyed you know getting to know him and, and talking to him. Like I said, and, and and really I think a hidden gem. We'll talk about that later on the show. But the the food at the Haberdasher is absolutely under the radar when it comes to Mobile uh, food in downtown Mobile. Yeah, I, I've I've only eaten there a couple of times actually, but like I've heard I've heard a bunch of people talk about it. In um yeah, because you don't think of the hab being like a, a place to go for food, but they've got they actually have some killer dishes, don't they? Don't they have they some, do. like, like really solid stuff? And that's what we, me and him talk. We hit on that a little bit as well. And that, they've got they got high quality, you know, restaurant items and uh, mm -hmm. high quality restaurant food there at, inside the haberdasher. Is a Tiki Week so uh, ten? First of all, ten years. I didn't know that. That's pretty. That's pretty wild. I, I mean, I know that we've been talking about it for a number of years, like on the on the rundown or whatever, like putting it out or just kind of like mentioning it or whatever. Um, I so the the restaurant. So they'll have special like special menu items or special cocktails like during that during that week. Is that kind yeah? Of, they're going to have like a Tiki themed cocktail. Got for it. The most part. That's what most of them are going to do. Um, and I don't, I don't, I don't know if the if the full list has come out for this year yet. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know some of the restaurants. I know like Post has already teased their their drink that they're going to post, and, and, and as well as El Papi. That's that's a couple of the ones that I've seen so far that have been kind of teasing it. But you know, just about any venue down Dolphin Street, um, <clears throat> you're you're, you're going to find something tiki themed next week. That's August fourteenth through nineteenth. Got it. Okay. Okay. No, nah, that's cool. Do um, what? Does something special happen if you get a, if you get all like the stamps or something? You no. Get, like a, okay. Okay. You you're just like you get bragging rights. You get bragging rights. Yeah. You, you now the haberdasher is still kind of the like the central hub of Tiki Week. Um. So like they've got they go all out. I mean they they they're gonna be shut down 
the Sunday before completely shut down where they completely turned the haberdasher into a tiki lounge. That's okay. Blacked out windows. They completely, you know, turn it into a tiki room. And and all this is Roy's idea. Like he's, he's real big into tiki culture. um, And he talked a lot about that, you know, kind of his love for tiki culture. And um, it's, it's really, really, he talked about the history of tiki, which, you know, I I was very unfamiliar with. I, yeah, I was like, I didn't know there was like an actual history. Of yeah, tiki. yeah, this yeah. is exciting. Okay, cool. It started out in California um, with, a, with a tiki lounge back in like the 1930s. And, uh, and and so a lot of celebrities and stuff like that would come in. And um, and it just kind of grew from there. And there used to be tiki lounges all over the country. And, and that's what he, I thought was interesting that he mentioned was this was before people started taking exotic vacations to the Caribbean. You know, you used to be not be able to afford to take to hop on an airplane and go to the Bahamas or, you know, any kind of exotic location like this. So it was a real novelty, uh, this tiki culture was. So people were so fascinated by it. And so it kind of lost its luster, you know, maybe around the 70s, 80s, 90s, where where, where people actually, you know, you, you can go to islands in the Caribbean or places like that. And uh, and so it kind of lost its, 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 you know, like I said, its novelty a little bit, but it's kind of had a resurgence here the last 20 years. Bring it back, baby. He's yep. bringing it. He's bringing it back. I tell you what, someone out there, if you get all of your stamps on your passport and you want to show off, you can like come be a guest on here. We'll hop you in live and you can show us your yes. passport. So anyone listening to that, if you get all your stamps, me and Chris will give you accolades publicly. 100%. So, so, so we'll do that. All right. But so, we're probably so, going to have to not interview you the day after Tiki Week because, it, uh, man. We'll give you a break. <laughs> Yeah. Is that what you're saying? We'll give we'll yeah. give the person a break. Is that what you mean? 100 percent All right. So um it's been it's been hot. So like so uh, in uh this pic someone took this picture uh just around Mobile. I don't know why, I just thought it was funny. I thought it was pretty funny. So like in a in the Facebook group we have like all things Mobile, Alabama. Uh, I was just like, hey, post your picture from around town for the week, like something that you saw. And someone posted that and I was like, that's eh, pretty funny that someone set up a uh Death, death in a front yard, trying to mow the uh, mow the yard with a water water. That's bottle. why there's so many lawn companies in Mobile. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because yeah, we're all dying cutting our own grass, man. <laughs> we can't we can't cut That's, it, dude. My weeds are you know definitely a foot high right now, but because of the same reason. Yep, it's brutal, man. See, see, the way I see it is we're trying to we're trying to keep the grass healthy, so our grass That's is right. getting a little taller. But see, if we cut the grass back, it's not healthy for the grass, Chris. You're right. It's not healthy, green, right? so you got to let it grow a little tall. I mean, yep. it's I mean part of it may be the heat that we're going to die, but we're also we're looking after our neighbors and our grass. It's for the longevity. So uh, That's right. nobody give us a ticket if we have three inch tall grass or whatever. Okay, uh, city city people out there that are that are writing <laughs> weedling tickets or whatever, we're trying to do our thing. Um, I mean, grass cutting. Now I'm not going to nerd out on this at all, but it's a very <laughs> new thing in our world. You know what I mean? So people have not cut grass. I would say what the last 50 years of our entire human history, people have cut grass. Great. That's a great point, man. Uh, I mean, we've lived thousands of years without anybody cutting grass. Great. That's a great point, man. There's this guy uh, that has this brand called Epic Gardening. Uh, His name's Kevin something. And he, he made this quote. He's like, man, He's like, having a grass lawn is like the worst use of resources and whatever. And honestly, he didn't provide the answer of like what we're supposed to have all as an alternative. I, if I had to imagine, maybe it has something to do with some like front yard farming or something. I'm not really sure. But like, I was like, huh. I was like, it just made me think. I was like, oh, maybe maybe grass is kind of inefficient to have as a yeah. uh, as a as a yard or whatever. But you're right, man. That's a great point. We haven't been cutting grass all that long as a yep. uh, as a species. Speaking of speaking of doing crazy things as a as a species, man, uh, <laughs> let me let me throw up this picture here. Um, so there was a there was a bit of a brawl. Like where was this in, in Montgomery? A is bit, a bit was? of a brawl. Yeah, this is on the Riverwalk in Montgomery. And uh, now I've actually been to this. I've actually been to this location. I've actually rode on the boat that uh, that's kind of the center of all this. Not the the not the pontoon boat. Okay. But the, uh, <laughs> I have been on the uh, the river boat. That kind of started this whole controversy. Okay, uh, this 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 picture is not. We got this guy. Someone someone so, took a great snapshot here because we have someone flying into the water. We have a dude with these like someone called him Kid Rock. It was kind of funny. Someone uh, someone in the comments was like, "Hey, who invited Kid Rock to the to the thing or whatever?" 
Uh, I don't know what happened, but I watched this video. Did you Did you watch the video? Of, like, I, I've, this I've, uh, yeah, I've watched the video. I've I've I've, kind of, I've took it. I took a deep took a deep dive with this thing. Um, okay, give me so, give yeah, me some so, insight. How did this start? This started by the, you see the pontoon boat right there. So this pontoon okay. boat yeah. it looks like it's parked illegally. And there's a riverboat cruise that goes up and down the Alabama River that's supposed to park right here. And that's the, that's the, this is the parking for that riverboat. So this pontoon boat obviously, you know, pulled up right here, was not supposed to park there. So the security guard, uh, you know, comes up and, and will kind of maybe, you know, one of the first mistakes, maybe, I don't, and, and we don't know really the whole backstory, but it looks like he tried to like untie this boat from the, you know, kind of unmoor the boat there from the dock. Yeah. And I think, so the boat owner, you know, realized that, hey, man, this, what's this guy doing messing with my boat? And yeah. so they started getting into it. And, um, you know, obviously, like, the guys, they should have asked, who, the owner of the boat should have moved his boat immediately. Sure. And he didn't. So instead, they just kept arguing, you know, we don't know what their conversation was about. And anyway, it turned into a fist fight, and it turned into about four guys or, you know, four or five people jumping on the security guard. And, um, and so the people that are on the riverboat are trying to like, so they're part, they're trying to park the boat and, um, they're like screaming, you know, Hey, somebody come help this guy, you know, help this guy out. And, uh, so people, man, it's, it's crazy. So people start coming to help the guy out. So it's turned into this huge brawl. And, uh, and this is kind of the aftermath of it right here where, uh, yeah, the lady gets thrown in right there. Um, Did you, like the, the Somebody hit a lady on the head with a chair, and that person got immediately arrested. Yeah, uh, a dude ju jumped from the riverboat and like swam across the channel to be like, "I'm get, I'm getting in this thing." Yeah, I'm young guy, sixteen somebody. years old too. What you know, young guy? You know, That's going in there, starting to throw some some punches in with them, these grown men. <laughs> the part of the part of the thing I have is that I'm like, sometimes I think people getting in fights, they just want to get in a fight. Like they don't. I don't even yeah. know if they even know exactly what's going on sometimes. Like, yeah. is that is that the case here for half of these people that I are, like, jumping the, in? The biggest case is, you know, obviously it looks like the people in the pontoon boat have been out all day drinking. Yeah. You know, they look sunburnt in a couple of these videos. They did. They had red shoulders. So they were probably intoxicated. I would bet alcohol would be the number one reason. And so, you know, there's just – Probably know, involved. Alcohol like. probably involved here in this giant brawl. Uh, yes. We would, we would bet likely. money on that. We would bet money on that. Yeah, yeah. okay. So I'm gonna go with alcohol being the uh, the the, uh, the culprit here. This is a great okay shout. I don't even voices of Sarah Land uncensored. I honestly don't know this this group, but now I do. That's a that's a nice uh, that's a nice still that you grabbed from a video <laughs> or something. That just really like tells the story of what happened there. So uh, props props to you guys, voices of Sarah Land uncensored. Good on you. That was nuts. Um, I, I'm just glad I wasn't in the middle of it. Let me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let me let me put it that way, man. Um, glad I glad I wasn't there. Okay, all right. That's enough. That's enough brawls, man. Um, what do you what do you what else you want to talk about? What else are you seeing around here? Well, yeah, um, the, we got a, we got a new restaurant coming soon to Mobile, downtown Mobile. We got a new restaurant coming to the uh, to the Admiral Hotel. Really? I think we ought to talk about that. You know, there's a uh, you got the you know, the Admiral's going through like a big renovation right now, million dollar renovation. Multi -million I saw. Okay, renovation. I saw. An, all right. So the, the ground floor there um, is going to be, a, a, what they're going to call it Lemoyne's Chop House. Um, so named after our founders, the founding brothers, the Lemoyne brothers. Um, so I think that'll be cool, man. That'll be, you know, the, the, they've advertised, you know, some high quality cut meats and, you know, fresh local seafood and cocktails and wine and stuff like that. So um, I think that'll be a nice little addition to, uh, to downtown Mobile, you know, having a, having, a, having a good little steakhouse and stuff like that. Well, let me, so... This is the uh, right next to Government Plaza, right on the corner. That's right. Yeah. So, to I feel like it went through a renovation, maybe it like did. five years ago or something. It hadn't or been long. Is, yeah, yeah, maybe ten years ago now though. Okay, that, maybe it, ten it years ago. It hadn't been long. Then they did do a renovation. They added a little restaurant right there, uh, corner two five one. Exactly. I, uh, I don't think it was, uh, you know, I, 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 which I never went there, so I, don't, I can't say too much about it. But you know, I think it was mainly a sandwich place and. Um, is is, the, is that where the is, is that where the new restaurant is going to be? Is there or, or further inside? I, do you know? I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be in that same exact uh, corner of the building. I think they said they're going to tear that, uh, expand the lobby where the restaurant was, 
and it's actually mm. going. So if you walk into the front doors of the Admiral, I think the restaurant's going to be on the right. Got it. Yeah, because in my mind, I've been to two fi- corner two five one before, like once or twice, maybe. Cool. Like it's it's pretty neat because it's neat where you can sit in there and see outside and everything. Like, um, and I think there were there was another dining area inside the main spot, and so I'm wondering if that's where Lemoyne's I think so. Chop House is going to be is is in there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that's so. A, that's exciting, man. Yeah, that's that's gonna be a cool spot. That I feel that, like that area of Government Street. It almost feels like you're in a different city when you walk around, walk around in that area of town. Um, it feels like a big city right there. It feels a lot different than it does just one, two blocks over on Dolphin. That's a good point. Is it? What is it? Do you think? Is it the building styles? Is it yeah. like the white, the wider street? Maybe downtown yeah, wider yeah, street that building section? style. Yeah, it, it, it feels like you're in a big city right there. If that was your first impression of Mobile, I think that would be a inaccurate representation of Mobile. But um, gotcha. And then, uh, That's my thoughts there. of course you have the, uh, we'll save this for another time, but I don't know. Someone, someone's keeping track of how many times the, uh, the bankhead tunnel has been hit. <laughs> uh, it's a lot. I don't know the answer there. Well, uh, yeah. that, you know, that that's becoming like a leprechaun, I think in Mobile. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. What, yeah. Uh, of course. Yeah, now, the, for, the best sign lately, the best one I've seen was the, uh, nappy award winner for best truck stop. <sighs> Did you see that one? No. Uh, uh-uh. uh, <laughs> That, that was, that's the best sign that I've seen going into the bankhead lately. The best Nappy truck stop. winner, best truck stop. Oh my gosh, that's funny. We gotta find a. We'll have to find a picture or something. We'll bring it up next time. That's yeah. That's it, pretty, it was that's going pretty around funny, Facebook man. a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. You gotta check that out. <laughs> oh, that is great. That was great. Best truck stop. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. All right, I see. I see over here. You got something about some some uh, some hidden gems in Mobile. What uh, what is what is that, man? Well, I, I, I don't want to say what it is. I want you I to think tell we are to highlight, you know, like I said, you know, th- there's so many places in Mobile that, um, you know, kind of off the beaten path a little bit and um, that are really cool places that I don't think a lot of people know about. Um, and and kind of what I was thinking about when I, with, with this one, I went into the Do Goods Mercantile a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I feel like, man, I feel like that is a hidden gem in Mobile. Uh, it's right there in downtown Mobile. Um, it's an incredible shop. Um yeah, Annie's the owner there. Uh, kind of got to know her a little bit, you know, the few times I've been in there. And and so it's just a really cool place. I mean, they they everything that they sell in there um, is actually comes from artisans and, and people like that who who support charities and mission work. And and so that uh, so everything that you buy in there is eventually in turn going to be you know given back to the community. And so that's kind of the name behind the Do Goods Mercantile. But um, they got so many cool things in there um uh, pocket knives and candles and jewelry um really cool leather bags you know wallets and you know bags for women men just all kind of stuff in there it's crazy i'm hopping on like looking at the website right now so i am i've seen the building and really cool because it's written on the side of the building downtown right yeah so I, I think it, i think it says do some good on the side yep 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 or, i think so or or maybe it's their entire business do or maybe it just says I don't know what it says. Maybe it says do goods mercantile on the side. Um, maybe I'm getting that confused with my wife's new nonprofit called do some good. Maybe that's why I said that. I'm not really sure. Um, I've seen it though. And embarrassingly enough, I have not been inside. I have not gone there. And maybe this is my, Hey Brooks, um, you run a brand called the Mobile rundown. You should be embarrassed for <laughs> ever having been inside. Um, so well, we cool. went in, last time I went in there was, uh, my kids were doing the where's Waldo hunt in July. Yes. And that okay, was cool. one of the stops. So we went in there, you know, trying to find Waldo. And Waldo was extremely hard to find there. Ooh. And so it got me looking around at all the cool stuff they got in there. Um, but they've got, I mean, you know, if, you, if you're looking for a cool local gift, I mean, that's got to be the place right now because they got Love gifts it. for men, women, kids, um, even dogs. And so, I mean, it, they, it. They, they've got, it's, it's a cool spot. Love it. Do Goods Mercantile. Love the love the name. Obviously, I'm a bit biased. We have a uh, we have a project called Do Some Good Mobile, which right. I, and you I, I don't know if you know this. So Mandy has Mandy's my wife. For anyone watching or listening, Mandy's decided to uh, she's made the call to turn it into its own 501c. So she's like she started the process of creating a nonprofit out of Do Some Good Mobile in order to highlight and promote like basically market other nonprofits in the area that like don't like it, it's it's crazy man there are, i don't know if you know this but man there's like hundreds and hundreds of 
official nonprofits in the area that you've never heard of. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and Mandy's like, dude, I gotta like, you know, well, she, she didn't, she didn't say, dude, uh, this is me. This is me giving the, uh, my interpretation of what she said, dude, I've got to figure this out for these brands, you know? Um, and so, yeah, so, so do some goods and it's like fifth year for like publication, but she's, yeah, she's, I'm, I'm really proud of her. She's, um, she's expanding it, creating its own 501c and like really, really gonna, really gonna blow it up, I think. So yeah, that's awesome. Perfectly named company and shout out to you guys, do goods mercantile. I mean, I think that's, that's, that's super cool, man. So and they're yeah, only closed for- on Sunday. That's the only day they're closed. So you can oh, go by there okay. any, every day of the week. It's not one of those, you know, you don't know the hours or you don't know the days that they're open kind of place. They're open every day except for Sunday. Love it. That's awesome, man. Okay. I know you got to go, you got to go in a few minutes. So any, anything, uh, Oh, let's, oh let's yeah. Man, we got some fun here at the end. Let's, and call I got final, let's call a final segment or something before you got to, before you got to final segment out. is, uh, well, guess the dish you've got to get. So obviously, okay. right. So I've got a lot of pictures of food on my phone, so okay. we're going to put them to good use for you. And, um, and so, yeah, I thought we'd do a little thing called Guess This Dish. Now, I don't think, I don't know, I don't think, do you don't go out to eat probably as much as I do? do I, um, I do not. We're, do, we're doing a project, like A to Z in 2023. Right, where we're eating. yes. And, and people, people, I think are calling, I think people think we're like lying about where we're going. People are like, oh, clearly you've been there. Nah, man, so far every restaurant that we've promoted on that, we have actually never eaten at uh, any That's of cool. I, I think we may have taken we may have taken one and said, well, like, well, this one person in our family went, but it was like seven years ago or something. But I, I don't, that may be only like one besides that. We just like haven't eaten at these places that are like some, some of them are common staples for people. So it's, you know, it's a little bit. Yeah, I've been following along with you. And the last one, La Florida, so that's one of my favorites, man. So that was a, that was a definitely a good one for L. That was fun, man. Yeah. We, so if you, ha- if you, if you have more recommendations for us, hit us up. Uh, we, hold on, let me see. Obviously I'm not going to like reveal, where we're going, but I keep it. I keep a notepad with like, I keep a notepad with like notes on what we've got going. I, I think I have some that I, I'm gonna need. Um, dude, well, obviously, you, Q. Yeah, Q. I think is a toughie for us. Do Quincy is not around anymore, unfortunately, and uh, and they're not I local. S- I saw something called Quickly what? Asian Fusion Cafe. I think I have that okay. in my notes, so I wrote that down. That's the only Q option I even have. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to need a U. I'm going to need an X. We're going to need a Z. So if anyone has those, I don't know what we're going to do for those. If we can't find them, we haven't gotten that far yet. Not really sure, man. But uh, yeah, for anyone out there, you can, whatever. If you want to follow along, go to the mobile rundown. You'll see where we're like, we're trying all these restaurants. And we're kind of writing about them and putting some pictures and stuff. And that's been fun. Uh, Chris has inspired me to do that because Chris is like the food dude. So <laughs> I mean, you do own a food tour company, man. I don't know yeah, if people know yeah. that or so not. Going out to eat is a little bit of part of the uh, job description. It's a perk, man. It's a perk of your yep. job. It's a perk. All right, so I got, I got five dishes for you. I want to see if you can guess the dish and where the restaurant is that it come from. All right, do uh, I? First I one, I'm going to give you a softball on the first one. Do I need to uh, – so I need to share your screen and show yep. this image that I'm going to yep. look at. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm not looking at something I'm not supposed to look at yet. Okay. Yep. Uh, Go ahead. Yep. Okay. Softball. So, for people listening, this is an ice cream cone, and it looks like Cammy's Old Dutch yeah, you ice nailed cream. It. You nailed it. So, like I said, that's that's the first one. Boom. Um, toss you a softball on that one. I appreciate that because um, I wanted to, I wanted to at least get one right. You know what I mean? All right, so I'm gonna give you a softball on the other one as well. See if you can go with that one. This is a softball. This, this yeah. is a softball. This is a softball too. Yeah, yeah. So what it looks like to me is a Callahan's burger. Is what it looks like to me. Since you said softball, I'm hoping that's what it is. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Got it. Two for two, baby. Bacon cheeseburger from from yeah, Callahan's. I didn't, I didn't name the. I didn't name the meal. That's that's not softball. All right, a little bit a little bit tougher on this one. See if you can go with that one and see if you can guess this one. Okay, so for everyone listening, these are definitely oysters. Yep, got to be more specific oysters. on this one too. Um, I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to look at the. Uh, I'm looking at the edges of the image. I'm trying to look at the wrapper behind the oysters to see uh, what I can figure out. Um, okay, I'm just gonna throw out a guess. I gotta go. Right. I gotta go. Original Oyster House for that. Okay, one, is my guess. Any specific oyster? Any 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 kind of name? You going with any name of the oyster? Don't don't embarrass me. Don't embarrass me for this, because I don't know. It looks like some. Well, there's no wrong answer for you. There's par, no wrong. Looks guess. like parm. Looks like parmesan maybe yeah, yeah, on there. Yeah. There's there always some butter. So there's like uh, Rockefeller. Those are Rockefellers. All right. So incorrect. 
<laughs> these, are the, these are the flaming oysters at the bluegill. Uh, hey, I was close. I was on the causeway. Yeah, you were on the causeway. <laughs> flaming oysters, but it is yeah, it's Parmesan cheese over just a, over like an open flame there. Nice, nice. Um, next one. Which while you're while you're looking at the image, I'm gonna throw on look at. Oh wait, no, that's in behind. People can't see that. It's in our background. Never mind. I was gonna put the image on top of us. Is of a sunset at the causeway. There pretty, you go. Pre sunset the other day. All right. I'm ready. Right. I'm ready, man. Next one. Ooh. Okay. Uh, this looks like a gyro. Yep. Looks like some lamb there. Um. Yeah, pretty. I'm gonna go with seven spice. Down. There's uh, seven they got multiple locations throughout out throughout town of this particular. Oh, then maybe I'm not right because I, I I jumped a gun. I jumped a gun. You were trying to give me a clue, and I was saying like seven spice or something. But that's it's it that's not it. I don't think because they only have one no. location. Mediterranean Cafe. Yep, you got it. You got it. That's the redneck hero. The redneck. Oh, cool. I don't know if I've. Yep, I don't know if I've had that sausage in it. You probably can't see the Connecticut sausage on that photo, but. Um, that's what makes it the redneck hero. That's a, that's a great sandwich, by the way. All right. Okay. All right. Last like, one. Like the wreck. All right. Final final food guess for people listening. Uh, this one's tough because I can't really tell. It looks like it might be sushi, but I'm not yep. even 100% sure. Okay. So yep. this is yep. some you got sushi. That part. This is a good looking plate of sushi because it's like got this beautiful dressing and stuff on it. It's, um, a, pretty, it's a pretty famous dish um, around town. Especially I'm gonna for go, sushi lovers. I'm going to go with Chuck's. Yep, nailed it. Bam! Yep. So that's from Chuck's. Cool. What, that is, you want to take a stab at the name of the sushi roll? Not even going to guess, man. All right, Donkey on Crack. Donkey on Crack. What a donkey name. Crack. What a good name for a sushi roll. And that's a good that's a good looking plate of sushi. Yeah, it is. It's a huge, it's a huge portion as well. It doesn't it may not the picture may not do it justice how large it is. Um this was on their this was like a secret menu for an item for a long time. But really? now it's a part of it's kind of it's such a staple now of their menu that uh, everybody knows about it. It looks like a looks like a couple of looks like a couple of rolls almost. Like uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that would that'd probably that'd probably fill me up if I yeah. Was oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You're gonna you're definitely gonna want to share that. As long as I as long as I wasn't starving, I think I'd be solid on that, man. Yeah, for, for a meal. That was great, dude. All right, dude, dude, that was fun for a um. I feel like for a first show, I feel like this was solid. I feel like yeah. I feel like we should end it there. Uh, I know you got to go shortly. Stick around for a couple of seconds, man. Let's like let's debrief for like thirty seconds, Sounds and then uh, people will be looking out for the poll and the mobile rundown newsletter. We'll we'll give you something that you can vote on for the show as we uh, as we progress it forward. So, uh, any final word, man? It's been fun. Looking forward to a, the next episode. Me too. All right. See you guys.